So, since I'm left-handed, we have to change something. Pull this off. Okay. You actually don't have to do this, but you can since it's full jack. But if you really want to, you can do a lot of it. Makes me feel more comfortable. Yep. Shooter. All right, I need a cartridge. Oh, the bolt's back. Ah, okay. The bolt's back, then it's engaged the ejector so it won't come out. That makes sense. There you go. Look at his split. Now, if I want to visually see if this thing's loaded. Uh -huh. Kind of you have look to down do the it. Magwell if you want to, but that's what this little window's for right there is for checking. Oh, nice. Okay. So there's a little window right there that lets you uh, see the bolt in operation. You can and also see if you've got a jam or something like that. Right. Dust cover is going to open automatically? Yes. Thank you. Is this suppressed or does it just have no, a... No, that's just a flash can on the front there. Okay. But that's what, that's, that's what this handguard's for is for a suppressor. If you want to run it that way. That loads really nicely, even with the bolt closed. You don't have to slam it in. Well, it's no FAMAS, but you know. That's true, that's very true. There is no bipod, sir. So the, the so the one thing with the ejection system is it likes to run hard. Okay. So if you want to unload a loaded cartridge, yep. you really need to give it a good tug backwards. Otherwise, it gets what it gets a good bind in there. Okay. And it's probably yeah, it already is. So I fucked it up. Go ahead and let me pull this off. See what happens is if you don't pull it hard back, it it, it only it kind of just kind of half-ass kicks it in there. Okay. But so if you pull it back hard, it locks it in and then it'll push it out. So it was yeah. far enough and it was like right in between where the exactly. bolt would push farther and where it would get kicked out. Exactly. So it's just, I mean, it's just, uh, there's just little quirks that you would have to get used to if you, when you run it, but okay. no big deal. Carl, you should try it. Yeah, I'd like to try it. Wow, that is incredibly easy. That is slick, isn't it? Yep, let's give it a whirl. Lock it back, HK style. Yeah, close. He's not taking out any steel, though. All right, so now back. Ah. Mag no, out. No, no, no. Oh, Are here. you trying to pull it? There you go. That's the bolt release. It's a lot easier, isn't it, now? Yep. Yeah, that's the bolt release there. So, if, if I may. Yes. Um, the reason it's like that, so the way it works is your, uh, so when you go empty, send me that mag. So when you go empty, your bolt release pops out, okay? Got it. So you can you can use one of the two uh, mag releases. You need to just drop it out with the front with the front release here. Uh -huh. Or if you want to strip it, you can grab it right here like you Either or. And just hold on to it. And then when you go to charge your new fresh mag, you drop it in, and in one motion, go right back to charge driving. Nice. That's so pretty slick. It is. That is pretty cool. So is this on the market now or what? Yeah, these started shipping in August. They did. Yeah. All right. Interesting. We're still we still have quite a big backlog that we're working through of to course. get them out. So you're going through the pre-orders? Yeah, yeah. We're still shipping pre-orders. So I mean, by the time you know, if you ordered one today, you're not going to get it for a while. Right. But um, what's what is that time at this point? Uh, we're we're expecting to be caught up by about. 
So we should be theoretically have all pre-orders filled by May. And I should know because I, I haven't been paying attention. What's the MSRP on this? Uh, the 308 is 2500 and the 223 is 2200 Okay. But either one, will you can swap back and forth. So. And the 223 will take standard P mags? Yep. yep. I've run GI mags. It's here. a Stanek Magwell. Yeah. Okay. Exactly. Where was that? That was low. I've even run like the old, the old crappy GI mags, and they were great. Hit. Yeah. That was our. That was my first chance to actually fire the gun. I mean, we held it at shot show many times, but this is the first time to fire it. Firing it says a lot. Yeah, it does. It's uh, a riot. Distinctively nicer than the 308 Tavor, to be honest. What's that? Much nicer oh. than the 308 Tavor. Oh, you guys already held it? Yeah. yeah. Really? Yeah. Make sure you tell everybody that. No, this is much better. Now, I think the Tavor is a lot less expensive, isn't it? Oh, yeah. I think the, the, the Tavor 7s, like I think, only like nineteen ninety nine. That could be. I think. 5.56. Yeah. Five, five, okay. Is it this one have a zero or not? Uh, that one, I believe, is zero. Yes. All right. Same handling, I assume. Yep. The recoil impulse is mild. So I noticed it it was a there's a concussion to it through your face on the 308. Okay. But not on the 556. Wow. That's pretty cool. Alright, so Ian, uh, the yeah. Desert Tech. We finally have fired the Unicorn Bullpup. That's that been waiting for the industry. How long have we been waiting for that gun? Years. Although, to be honest, neither of us has really been paying attention to it. Well, we haven't been because of the bullpup. Let's be blunt. This is true. But there's been a lot of um, hype about it. Yep. And it's been out, I guess, since August. Yes. I admit I didn't even know that. Um, neither did but, I. But we got to live fire the 308 and the 556 today. Yep. Compare it to your FAMAS at this point. Now, you didn't run it through a match, Ooh. but from your couple mags there, what do you think? It is, unfortunately, quite compelling. It is. Um, so they have... It's interesting to see where we saw how Tavor changed up their method of switching left to right. Yep. Desert Tech has their method, which is substantially simpler than even what the Tavor has. It is. And what's more interesting even is that you don't even have to switch it. It ejects from back here, but it ejects straight forward. And so you really don't even have to switch it to shoot. That's what I was going to say. So one of the things, you know, one thing that FAMAS actually has going forward is that you can switch the ejection pattern if you have the administrative time to do it. Right. You can take the thing apart, take the cover off, switch the bolt around, change the ejector, put it back in. Right. But that's something you're doing administratively, proactively when you need, you, you know you need it. Right. With this gun, if suddenly, for example, we're out in the field and um, I get killed by a wild hyena and you pick up my Desert Tech and you now want to make it a left-handed gun, you literally just switch those port panels yeah. and you're done. Or if you are in a competition and you come up to a corner that you have to shoot wrong shoulder, yep. you don't have to do anything. No, you, you don't. really just can switch it to the other shoulder and shoot. It, it's interesting that the bullpup before this that actually solved the problem of true ambidextrous handling in a emergency situation, which is coming up on a corner right hand, come up on a corner, switch hands and shoot left side. The gun that fixed that was the FS2000 right. with a very Rube Goldberg forward ejection pattern solution. A, a bit. Yeah. This gun, by just having that port funnel the ejection that way, you said you felt some of the blast, but the reality is that if you had to switch and suddenly go to the other shoulder, there is no real reason you couldn't shoot that on the clock or in an emergency situation by just switching shoulders. Easily, yeah. And it wasn't, I wasn't feeling blast. Right. What I was getting at there was in the 308 version. In fact, my first, when I first fired it, I thought it was pulling mustache hairs. Oh. I got a really, actually a really pretty intense concussion in the cheek rest of the gun. Okay. I don't know exactly what it was. I suspect it's probably, I bet, it's some part of their ejection mechanism that's putting energy into the side of the receiver. And that was a little bit disconcerting at first, mm -hmm. and then kind of went away after a couple of mags. Okay. I just kind of acclimated to it. And with the 5.56, that just flat out didn't exist. Um, to play devil's advocate, the problem is this, it's a really nice gun. It's, it, everything about it just feels well-tuned 
and professional. It honestly, it feels like a Hudson. Well, Desert Tech yeah, is yeah. known to be a quality company yeah. from their precision rifle side. That's right. This isn't their first. Gun. This isn't their. This isn't their first foray into the industry. So, with that said, we've been waiting for this bullpup forever, mm -hmm. and kind of threw it off the radar because of bullpup. Now that I've handled it and fired it, 308, I have no interest in. I don't need that. But the 556 gun. Uh, damn it, I want to try it. Well, and I have to play devil's advocate and yeah. ask, what does it do better than our what would stone rifle? Again, it only does something that a bullpup can do, which is just be shorter. Yeah. But in that regard, if you want to have that overall length being what it is, but still have what you have in barrel length, and still not lose a lot in your handling, that bullpup seems to be, and I would not want to say this without actually taking it out to multiple competitions yeah. or training events, seems to be a bullpup that might very well pull that off the best I've seen. Controls are good, the balance is good, yep. it handles nicely, which not many bullpups do. Yeah, I was not expecting to be impressed, and it, that's pretty. I find your comparison gun. to the Hudson interesting in that um, the Hudson had lots of hype, uh -huh. and then it turned out, oh, there's actually a reason for the hype. Yeah. The Desert Tech has had lots of hype for years, and now that we only got to put a few rounds here at Media Day, which is not the definitive solution sure. for figuring this out, but a couple rounds here at Media Day, I have to say it appears that the hype has some validity to it. Yeah, it's clearly a well-made gun. I think it, it appears that the time they have taken to get it into production really legitimately went into making it into a truly well-finished gun. So on that note, what I'd say about this is that even though it's a bullpup and I'm compelled generally to be against them, I would love to bring that out to two-gun to matches, maybe to hard as hell, and actually put it through his paces and find out how well does this best, potentially best-of-breed bullpup actually perform under time stress, under duress, in a training environment. Yeah. Okay, I'm convinced. I want to try it. Desert Tech, how do we get one? Oh, they're on back order forever. Hey, we can't we can't uh, argue about the people who put money down a long time ago. Those guys get their guns first. No, but we'll eventually get one and we'll give it a try. I'm pretty sure we will. This is yeah. worth giving a whirl. Yep. Pretty cool.